Hello all, welcome to Concept E classes. In this video, we will be studying the third chapter of class 8 science, Synthetic Fibers and Plastics. So let's begin. So the first question that comes to our mind is, why should we study this chapter? This chapter is important because we will be studying about fibers and plastics. The clothes we wear, the curtains in our homes, the carpets and many other such items are made up of fibers. Similarly, plastic is also such an item which have an extensive use in our day to day lives. For example, the toothbrush we use from the morning, the plates, the toys, water bottles and many other items are made with plastics. Therefore, it becomes necessary for us to know more about fibers and plastics. So the next question is what are fibers? So to understand what are fibers, if we pull a thread from a fabric, we can find thin strands of thread. These thin strands are made up of still thinner strands called as fiber. That is a fabric is made up of a large number of thin fibers. So fibers can be natural as well as man-made. Natural fibers. In the previous classes, you have already learned that natural fibers like cotton, wool, silk are obtained from both plants and animals. That is any hair-like raw material that is directly obtained from animals and plants or etc. are called as natural fibers. Example, protein fibers obtained from wool and silk, cellulose fiber from the plants, cotton and jute. Now, synthetic fibers. That is our main topic of third chapter. Synthetic fibers are the fibers made by human beings. Therefore, they are called as man-made fibers. A synthetic fiber is obtained by using certain raw materials of petroleum called as petrochemicals. That is, synthetic fibers are obtained by the chemical processing of petrochemicals. Now, they are made up of chain of small units called as monomers joined together and many such small units combine to form a large single unit called as polymer. Therefore, the synthetic fibers are made up of polymers. Now, let's see the structure of a polymer. The structure of a polymer can be compared to that of a bead of necklace. The beads act as monomers and the process of combining the monomer to a polymer is called as polymerization. Now, the word polymer comes from the two Greek words poly which means many and mer meanings part or unit. Therefore, a polymer is made of many repeating units. Synthetic fibers are of four types, rayon, nylon, polyester as well as acrylic. Now, let us study each of these fibers in detail. So, the first synthetic fiber that we are going to study is rayon. Rayon is obtained from a natural source called wood pulp. That is rayon is a synthetic fiber obtained from the wood pulp and the pulp is further processed to form rayon fibers. Now, how is rayon formed? In class 7, I hope you guys have studied that the silk fiber was obtained from a silk worm and it was discovered in China. The fabric which is obtained from silk fiber was very costly and attempts were made to make silk artificially. And in the end of the 19th century, the scientists were able to obtain a fiber which had the properties of silk. That is, it was smooth, it was comfortable to wear. And that fiber was obtained from a wood pulp. And it is also called as artificial silk. That fiber was rayon. And that's why it is called as artificial silk. And it looks very similar to silk. And it can be woven like silk fibers. It's very cheaper than silk and it can be dyed in a variety of colors. Rayon is used in textile industry for making shirts, skirts and many types of textile products. So what are the uses of rayon? Rayon when mixed with cotton we could make bed sheets. Rayon mixed with wool is used to make carpets. Now the second synthetic fiber is nylon. Nylon is a man-made fiber made without using any natural raw material from plant or animal. It is made from coal, water and air and it was the first fully synthetic material discovered in 1931. 
Now nylon fiber is very strong. It is stronger even than steel wire. It is elastic as well as light. And some of the articles made by nylon are clothes. We make socks as well, ropes, tents, toothbrushes, car seat, belt, sleeping bags, curtains, etc. All are made from nylon. And it's also used for making parachutes and ropes for climbing because it is very strong in nature. Now let's see the uses of nylon. Because of its high strength, it is used for making parachutes, ropes which are used for rock climbing as well. It's also used in making fabric like socks and also curtains. It's also used for making toothbrushes, car seat belts, etc. Now the third synthetic fiber is polyester. Polyester, poly plus ester, that means repeating unit of esters. Esters are the chemicals which give a fruit like smell. Now the fabric made by polyester does not get wrinkled easily. Polyester is crisp and it's easy to wash. Therefore, it is quite suitable for making dress materials. Terilin is a popular polyester and it can be drawn into very fine fibers that can be woven like any yarn. PET is also another polyester and it is used for making bottles, utensils, fillings, wires, etc. The fabrics which are sold by the name polycot or polywool are made up by mixing two types of fibers. That is polycot means the mixture of polyester with cotton and polywool means mixture of polyester with wool. Now let's see the uses of polyester. Polyester is used for making bottles, tapes and films and also fabrics like ties and this is a terilin yarn and it's used for making curtains as well. Now the fourth synthetic fiber is acrylic. This synthetic fiber resembles natural wool and it's also called as artificial wool. Most blankets, shawls are made up of acrylic and they are less expensive as compared to wool and they are av available in different colors. So acrylic is mainly used for making shawls, sweaters as well as blankets. So we have studied the types of synthetic fiber. Now let's discuss the characteristics of synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are durable, they dry up quickly, they are affordable, that is they are very less expensive, they are readily available, they are easy to maintain. And one disadvantage of synthetic fiber is that it melts on heating. This is actually a disadvantage of synthetic fiber. If clothes catch fire, it can be disastrous. The fabric melts and sticks to the body of the person wearing it. So it is advised not to wear synthetic clothes while working in the kitchen or in a laboratory. So we have studied what are fibers, what are synthetic fibers, then we study the types of synthetic fibers, then characteristics, and now we will study about plastics. Just like synthetic fibers, plastics are also made up of polymers. But here, all plastics do not have the same type of arrangement of units. That is, the monomers are not arranged in the same way. Some are linear, whereas some are cross-linked. Plastic articles are available in all sizes because Plastic is easily moldable. That is, plastics can be easily molded into any shape or size. Example, polythene, poly plus ethene. It is commonly used for making polythene bags. Plastics can be recycled as well as reused. Plastics can be colored, melted, rolled into sheets or made into wires. These are some of the properties of plastics. So types of plastics. Have you observed that some plastic articles can bend easily, while some break when forced to bend? So plastics are mainly of two types. The first one is thermoplastic, the other one is thermosetting plastic. So let's see what thermoplastics are. If you pour a hot water inside a plastic bottle, it gets deformed. Such plastics which get deformed easily on heating and can be bent easily are known as thermoplastics. Example, polythene and PVC, polyvinyl chloride. These are the examples of thermoplastics and they are used for the manufacturing of toys, combs and various types of containers. 
Now let's see about thermosetting plastics. Thermosetting plastics. The plastics which when molded once cannot be softened by heating are called as thermoplastics. Example, Bakelite and Melamine. Bakelite is a poor conductor of heat and electricity and it is used for making electrical switches, handles of various utensils. That is, most of the switchboards that are present in our house are made up of the thermosetting plastic called as Bakelite. Melamine is also another thermosetting plastic and it is a very versatile material. It resists fire and it can tolerate heat better than any other plastic and it is used for making kitchenware and fabrics which resist fire. So some of the examples of thermoplastics are PVC pipes, toys as well as bottles. Examples of thermosetting plastics are utensils or cookware and the handles of cookware as well as switches and telephones. So we have studied what are plastics, the different types of plastics, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic and now we'll study the properties or the characteristics of plastics. Plastics are non-reactive. That is, we know that when a metal like iron is gets rusted when it's exposed to moisture or air, but plastics, they do not react with water or air. Second point, they are not corroded easily. Therefore, they are used to store various kinds of materials, including chemicals as well. The plastics are light, strong and durable. And because of that, most of our household articles are made up of plastics. Plastics are cheaper than metals and they are very easy to handle. Plastics are poor conductors of heat and electricity and that is why electrical wires have plastic covering and the handles of screwdrivers are also made of plastics. The handles of frying pan also are made up of plastics because they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Now let's see the more uses of plastic. Plastics are used in healthcare industries. Examples of their use are the packaging of tablets for making syringes, doctors gloves and a number of medical instruments are made using plastics. Now many cookware used in microwave ovens for cooking food are also made of plastics. Teflon is a special plastic which is used for non-stick coating on cookwares. And fireproof plastics, they are mainly used for making suits for firemen. We know that synthetic fiber are very easily able to catch fire. But these firemen have a coating of melamine plastic to make them flame resistant. So let's see the real time images where plastics are used. They are used in healthcare industries for making syringes and many other medical instruments. It's also used for making non-stick cookware and also used for making the suits of firemen, thereby making it flame resistant. So the last topic of this chapter is plastic and environment. We have seen the wide use of plastics in our day-to-day -day life. But the disposal of plastics is a big problem. Plastics are non-biodegradable. What do you mean by non-biodegradable? A material which is not easily decomposed by natural processes are called as non-biodegradable material and a material which gets decomposed by bacteria is called as biodegradable. Now let's see a set of waste which are biodegradable as well as non-biodegradable. Peels of vegetables, leftover foodstuffs, they are biodegradable and it takes about one to two weeks to decompose. Paper, it's biodegradable, it takes 10 to 30 days to degenerate. Cotton cloth, 2 to 5 months, it's biodegradable. Wood, 10 to 15 years and it's biodegradable. Woolen clothes, about a year and it's biodegradable. Tin, aluminium, metal cans, they are very hard to decompose and they are non-biodegradable and it takes 100 to 500 years. Similarly, plastic bags also, they are non-biodegradable and they take several years to regenerate. Since plastic takes several years to decompose, plastics are not environmental friendly. Even if you try to burn a plastic or a synthetic material, it releases a lot of poisonous fumes causing environmental pollution. And this synthetic material 
does not get completely burned easily as well so what does people do they go and dump the plastic in garbage and some animals they consume this plastic as well what will happen if these animal consumes this plastic the plastic material it chokes the respiratory system and it even can cause death to this animals so what can be done or what measures can be done to be free from all this plastic so what measures can be done to make our environment clean and free from plastic the first method is avoid using plastics as far as possible make use of bags which are made of jute or cotton when you go for shopping the biodegradable and non biodegradable waste should be collected separately and disposed of separately it is better to recycle plastic waste all thermoplastics can be recycled however during recycling certain coloring agents are added and thus this usage should especially be limited to storing foods and as a responsible citizen always remember the 5r principle reduce reuse recycle recover and refuse so don't forget the 5r principle that is to reduce the use of plastics reuse plastics recycle recover and refuse and develop habits which are environment friendly so we have come to an end of our video tune in soon for the next session the next video will be on the question and answers of chapter 3 which is synthetic fibers and plastics if you have any doubts concerning this or any queries please feel free to mention it in the comment section and i'll clear your doubts don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you so much may god bless you all take care bye bye